Welcome to Legacy Education. Today we're reviewing a case involving the coding of a Mohs micrographic procedure. This case review is designed to help you think critically through your documentation, apply accurate CPT and ICD-10 CM codes, and reinforce the guidelines that support your code choices. Take your time, review the details carefully, and consider how each part of the case informs your final coding. So let's dive in. Here we have a 72-year-old male that presents with a biopsy-confirmed basal cell carcinoma on the left cheek, measuring one and a half centimeters. Due to the high-risk location and cancer type, Mohs micrographic surgery is performed. For stage one, they performed four tissue blocks that are submitted and examined, and margins are returned as positive. For stage two, additional excision with seven tissue blocks are submitted, and margins are clear after this stage. A layered intermediate closure is performed after tumor removal. The first step is to locate the CPT code. What is our procedure that is performed? The procedure that is performed is a Mohs micrographic procedure. Now, let's take a look at the alphabetic index. Under Mohs micrographic surgery and the alphabetic index, there are no additional options. It sends us straight to 17311 through 17315. When we get to the code set itself, there's a few things that we need to notice. First, there are two code families. The first code family is for the head, neck, hands, feet, genitalia in any location directly involving muscle, cartilage, bone, tendon, major nerves, or vessels. The second code family involves the trunk, arms, or legs. So let's go back to the scenario to refresh on the location where the Mohs procedure is performed. After looking at the case again, the anatomic location is the left cheek. Therefore, we should be in the first code family since the location is the cheek and that is located on the head. Next, we need to review to determine the number of stages and blocks that were performed. We see that we have two stages. Stage one has four tissue blocks and stage two has seven tissue blocks. Before we dive into the coding itself for the scenario, let's talk about what a block is and what a stage is. A stage is when the surgeon removes a piece of tissue directly from the patient. And then a block is when the surgeon acts as the pathologist and slices the stage into smaller pieces that are able to be viewed under the microscope in order to determine if the margins are clear. If these blocks do not appear to have clear margins, the surgeon will go back to the patient, remove another stage, and then break it into further blocks. This process will be repeated until the margins are reported as clear. So going back to the code set, we see that 17311 is for the first stage up to five tissue blocks. Since the first stage only had four blocks, we will report 17311. For the second stage, it is important to note that we should not report another unit of 17311 for the second stage. Instead, we should use add-on code 17312 for the second stage. The second stage has seven blocks. However, code 17312 only includes up to five blocks within that additional stage. So how should we report the sixth and seventh stages? Code 17315 is for Mohs procedures that have blocks beyond the first five for any stage. So for the sixth and seventh stages, we should report two units of 17315. So just to refresh, we have 17311 for the first stage, 17312 for the second stage up to the first five blocks, 
And then we have two units of 17315 for the sixth and seventh blocks within the second stage. We also have documentation of an intermediate closure that is performed in addition to the Mohs procedure. So let's take a look at our guidelines. The guidelines state that if a repair is performed, you can report that repair separately. So under the main term for repair, we want to look for the indentation for skin, whereas this is the location of the repair. We also know from the documentation that we are looking at an intermediate repair. So let's go take a look at 12031 and 12057. You can see that under the intermediate repair section, you have three different code families. The first family is for wounds that are on the scalp, axilla, trunk, and extremities, excluding the hands and feet, and the cheek does not fall here. The second family is for wounds on the neck, hands, feet, and external genitalia. Again, the cheek does not fall here either. And then the third and last family is for wounds on the face, ears, eyelids, nose, lips, and mucous membrane. The cheek does fall here, so let's dive further into this code family. Upon a further dive into this family, we can see that each of the codes are based on the size of the repair. And let's go back to look at our scenario again. And we only have documentation of the size of the lesion, nothing about the size of the repair. Therefore, we cannot assume that a repair is performed on an area that is any larger than the size of the lesion, which measured one and a half centimeters. Therefore, the code for a one and a half centimeter intermediate repair would be 12051. So now we have a total of four procedures, 17311, 17312, 17315 times 2, and 12051. Now let's go find our ICD-10 CM code. The condition that prompted the procedure is a basal cell carcinoma on the left cheek. Our main term that we look up in the alphabetic index is carcinoma. We do not want to default to the table of neoplasms for this scenario because carcinoma is a more specific condition than a normal malignant neoplasm. Under carcinoma, we can see an entry for basal cell. However, we do not see an entry to skin of the face. Therefore, we should refer to the C also instruction which will send us to the table of neoplasms, then skin, then malignant. So let's go there now. Once we get to the table of neoplasms, we find the entry of skin. And then we'll go to the cheek. And next to cheek, there is no further indentation of the behavior other than a malignant primary column. So now let's go to the see also note for skin and then face. Now that we have located the skin of the face, we see indentations underneath face. The first indentation is for our basal cell carcinoma, which is what the indication is for our surgery. We are directed to code C44.310. So let's go verify that code in the tabular list. Code C44.310 represents a basal cell carcinoma of unspecified parts of the face. However, we do know the specific site on the face, which is the cheek. So let's look at the other codes that we have. C44.311 is for the nose, which does not include the cheek. And then C44.319 is for the other parts of the face, which does include the cheek. Therefore, this is the code that we want to report. Now that we have found all of our codes, 
we need to look at the sequencing and modifiers for our procedure codes. According to our CPT guidelines, the sequencing of your CPT codes should be based on the RVU or the complexity of the procedure. These relative value units are assigned by CMS and can be found on their website. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will provide the RVUs for these codes. 17311 has an RVU of 20.44. 17312 has an RVU of 12.35. 17315 has an RVU of 2.42. And 12051 has an RVU of 8.43. 17311 should be listed first. 17312 is next. 12051 is third. And the last would be 17315. So now that we have determined the sequencing, let's talk modifiers. 17312 and 17315 are add-on codes, meaning that they are always modifier 51 exempt, so no modifiers will be needed on those codes. 12051 is performed on the same site, and that would indicate that we need a multiple procedure modifier to separate it from the MOS procedure itself. So it will get a modifier 51. Now, this scenario is a great example for interpreting your guidelines for when procedures should be included and reported separately, applying modifiers, or in this instance, not applying modifiers, and using combination codes for multiple conditions that could be related. Do you have any questions about this scenario? Make sure to comment below and we'll get back with you shortly. Share this example with your friends and make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can be notified of any future videos that are published. Thanks again.